I made up a solo for this song. No, you didn't. I did. No, I did. No, I did. No, I did. No, I did. Laurel and Hardy have gone to bed now, so you've just got me now. <laughs> so today I am going to be showing you this improvised solo that I have done over Jekyll and Hyde. It's always fun to improvise a solo in the George Lynch style for me. I love doing it. I've been doing it for many, many, many years. And you know, my thoughts on improvisation is actually that we're just recalling the knowledge that we have. It's not necessarily making something up which is completely new. I always find that the best time for me to do that is when the camera's not rolling on. <laughs> you know, I'm not recording something because then I can figure it out, I can work it out, I can get it under my fingers, get it up to tempo, and then I can use it in a solo in a meaningful way rather than trying something, doesn't work, got to retake or got to punch in, etc, etc. So improvisation is really drawing on the skills you already have. And I guess this was part of what I was trying to teach in season one of Lynch Licks, where I was just doing these little snippets, literally just a lick each week. And then it built up to a library of licks, all of which you could kind of connect together in various kind of, you know, combinations and stuff, all in the same key so that you guys could basically take them away and say, you know what, I love lick number one, I'm gonna put it with lick number six and then I'm gonna combine that with lick number two and then lick number 12 sounds really cool as well. So let's stick that at the end. And that's what's going on in my mind when I'm improvising and stuff. It happens very quickly for me now because I'm so used to doing it and I play literally, you know, five days a week now. And a lot of that time is spent actually just uh, noodling and coming up with stuff and soloing etc etc so your skills get honed when you do that so you know if you're practicing and you want to learn improvisation build that into your routine as well and I always find that it's awesome 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 to learn songs and solos by our favorite artists why because we're seeing improvisation we're seeing their writing skills in a completed format and we can really learn from that and that is a fantastic learning tool um, which is why I teach the solos you know note for note as well uh, because it's a different skill to have when you can play them note for note then you can start dissecting them taking um, licks that you like and incorporating them into your own playing in your own way um, and you know once you're skilled at that once you learn this huge library of songs and solos you just have so many combinations which you can draw upon and learning new songs all the time that's awesome because you pick up new tips every single time alrighty you want to see the solo
<laughs> I will show you. Let's go over to the spider cave. Yeah! All right, made up solo time. Yay! <laughs> so um, I improvised this solo for um, uh, this song because there isn't actually a solo um, on the, uh, the actual track. So I thought I'd make one up so that I could show you my thought process and stuff behind it. Now, when I was thinking about doing this song, um, I'd already thought about doing a solo and the first lick I already had in mind, and it's from one of the, the, um, the songs on, I think the KXM album, there was just a little phrase which George had done, um, which kind of went like uh, that I wanted to begin with, which is essentially what I did. So what I did, first of all, was um, I went to the 13th fret of the B string. I'm doing a full step bend up here. Now what I'm going to do is hold it and then I'm going to start picking. And I'm actually going to count it in sixes. And I'm going to count four times six, so 18 notes. But first I'm going to hold it for, I think it's a bar. One, two, three, four. And then I stop picking, so it'll be like this. Two, three, four. So I'm literally just doing after the bend. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Um, and then I'm coming up to the E string and I'm doing the 10th fret, 11th fret, back to 10th fret and doing some vibrato. Then I'm going to follow up with this. So I'm going to do 10, 11, 10 on the E string again. Then I'm going to come to the 13 on the B string. I'm going to pick it three times. And um, then I'm going to go to the 10th fret of the B string, pick that three times. And then I'm going to come to the 9th fret of the B string. Now this is our flat 5th in the, um, the uh, D minor pentatonic scale. And what I'm going to do here is a um, half step bend up and then I'm going to bring it down and put vibrato on it. So when I add those together, to, to begin with, we get this. Which is pretty cool, right? <laughs> so I'm drawing on a couple of like George phrases there, you know, um, that whole thing. And then I'm basically just coming down the pentatonic and utilizing that flat fifth. Which George does quite a lot of. Alright, after that I kind of figured, you know what, I'd like to do a tapping lick. And I want to start on this flat fifth simply because it's going to sound, you know, quite aggressive. Because I'm doing this. It's actually quite a punchy, punchy thing that, uh, that's coming across. Now the picking pattern, or I should say the tapping pattern is relatively straightforward. So I'm actually doing the 9th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret on the B string. And then first of all, I'm tapping at the 13th. And I, I think I was double tapping initially. And I basically just alternate between a single tap and a double tap. And you guys can improvise and kind of come up with a combination that works. So I do this for, I think, uh, a bar or two bars. Then what I'm going to do is tap and slide to the 15th fret of the B string. Now, my left hand is going to stay put. It's basically just going to continue doing 12, 13, 15. Sorry, not 12, 13, 15. 9, 10, and 12 on the um, uh, on the B string. Uh, and then basically when I'm doing the tap, I'm pulling back off um, 12, 10, and then 9. 
So now I'm going to tap at the uh, 15th fret. And then I'm going to slide again. This time I'm going to slide from 15 to 18. And that's going to give me my tapping lick. So like I said, play around with that and see what combination you can come up with. But the basic thing is just this. And when I go to that second and third one, I'm literally just doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with my pick. And this works really nicely because as I'm pulling off, I'm actually pulling off to different notes. And it gives this vibe of this kind of almost rotating lick. Alrighty, after that, I did this. And then I basically made a noise. <laughs> because then I was going to a, a, a different phrase. So what I'm doing there is um, I'm kind of coming down in fours. Um, so the first four, I'm going to slide into the 13th fret of the E string, then come to 12 and 10, and I'm picking everything here. And then I'm going to come to the 13th fret of the um, B string. And usually what I, I do is I do this twice. And then I come to the 12th fret of the uh, B string, so I'm going to do um, 12 and 10 on the B, then 13, 12 on the, the uh, sorry, not the B string, the E string. Uh, 12 and 10 on the E string, and then 13, 12 on the B string. And then the third one, or the fourth one is going to be um, the 10 on the E string, 13, 12, 10 on the, the B string. And then I'm going to do uh, one more on the B string, which is going to be 13, 12, 10. And then I think I was going to do something. I was probably going to come to the flat fifth or something, but then I, you know, just took my fingers off and you can hear a noise there. So you can hear something like that. There's a little bit of a bump and that's absolutely fine to do, um, especially when you're doing fast licks, because um, I find that it's a transition point. So again, that's my thought process behind it. When I'm doing it, that's fine as long as I don't just leave it there. <laughs> as long as I go on to something else. And in this case, I did this. So I went on to another lick straight away anyways. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this lick where I'm sliding into the 12th fret of the G string. So I'm going to play the lick first so you can see it um, slowly and then I'll, um, I'll break it down. So it'd be like this. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm sliding, back sliding into this 12th fret of the G string. I'm using my third finger because I'm then going to go to the 10th fret of the G. I'm not sliding from anywhere in particular, so I'm not doing like a slide from 17 to 12. Um, I'm actually picking and sliding at the same time so that the start point of the slide is imperceivable. So if you watch my hands, I'm picking and sliding at the same time. Both my pick hands going down and my fret hands going back at the same time. So there's no pause between it. And there's no pressure on the string initially. I'm starting to put pressure on where I start picking. And that gives me that really smooth sliding. So I'm going to backslide into 12. And I'm going to come to the 10th fret of the G. I'll then come back to the 12th fret of the uh, G string. I'm going to pick it. Then I'm going to do a half step pre-bend on the 12th fret and then bring it down. So like this. I'll then come back to 10 on the uh, G string. And then I'm going to do a quick little trill. So this is going to be the uh, 10th fret hammering on to 12th fret back to the 10th fret. So like that. So when I add it in we get that. Okay, now I'm going to come up to the D string. I'm going to play the 12, 10, 12. So I'm going to use my third finger, then my first finger, 
um, on the 12 and 10 respectively but then I'm going to slide my first finger over to the 12th fret I'm going to do the second 12 on the D string the reason because I want to do horizontal vibrato and the slide is going to give me a different attack on the note so it'd be like this <laughs> Now I can slide, you know, do the horizontal vibrato, slidey vibrato with my third finger. But then I don't get this sliding from 10 to 12. Which I like. And that's another trait of George's playing. The slideys, right? So when I add in these little inflections, it very much adds that George Lynch, Lynch-esque kind of flavor into, into my playing. All right. After that, I'm gonna um, repeat the first part of the lick but I'm gonna end it different this time I'm gonna do this so this time what I'm doing um, at the end is I'm barring off the 12th fret of the D string and the G string picking the D the G back to D and I'm palm muting this and then I'm coming to the 10th fret of the G string picking it with a pinch hum on it I'm putting lots of vibrato in. Alright, now I'm going to repeat this lick, but again, I'm going to end it different. So this time I'm going to do this. So I started off the same. And this time I'm, I'm doing the 12 and the 10 on the D string as well. But then, um, when, once I get to this uh, D string, I'm going to do this. So I'm picking at the 12, and then doing a quick trill from 10 to 12 back to 10. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the G string. Same frets, 12, 10, 12. Then I'm going to do um, the same thing on the B string, but this time I'm going to the 13th fret and the 10th fret of the B. I'm then going to come up to the 13 on the E string and I'm going to do a full step bend up and then bring it back down to a half step bend, so like this. And once I bring it back down, I'm going to put vibrato on that note. Uh, now I've spoken about pre-bends before, um, practice them. Listen to the tone that you're trying to get and just adjust your playing so that you can actually do the pre-bend to the exact pitches that you need. Alrighty, so once I've done that, I'm going to go into this lid. So I'm using some tremolo picking here, um, and I'm doing the 14th fret, 15th fret, 17th fret of the high E string, sliding over to the 20, and then doing a full step bend up. So, my first move will be this. Now, while I'm bending up, I'm actually catching the B string as well under my, my pinky here. And I'm going to up-pick this again so that I hit both strings. And then grab the bar and do vibrato. I'll then release both strings and then start diving. But very subtly, I'm not just going to dump the bar like this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to come down slowly. So that will be that whole phrase there. So when I do it from that, that little fast lick here. Um, and why did I use this? Again, it's a George thing, you know, I'm um, doing this bend. And coming down to the half step rather than... And back to the normal pentatonic. It's coming down to the, um, I think it's the, the uh, major third there. And then I'm using the major third again. And when I catch both strings, again, it's that George double stop thing. 
and dive at the end. Who doesn't like a dive? <laughs> <laughs> you like to do that, you know you do. Okay, so right after the dive, I do this. So I'm starting off with this phrase. So I'm going to the 13th fret of the B string and then I'm coming to the 10 and the 9 on the B but that first note I'm dipping into so I'm using the bar I'm picking and dipping at the same time now how I do this is I purposely put my fingers on the bar so that I have to dip down in order to reach the note um, if I do it as in picking the note and then uh, pushing down I get a down rather than a wow. I want to dip down into it. So my pick is actually um, higher than the string right now. You probably can't see from where, or maybe you can see from there. You, I'll do this so that you can see. So my pick is actually out here. So in order to get to the string, I have to push push down my hand and push down the bar. I can't reach the string. If I just reach the string like this and then try, I can do it, but it's more awkward because I have to push down with my fingers. If I just push down with my whole hand, then I get that perfect kind of meow. <laughs> so I'm going to um, uh, dip into that, pull off to 10, and then slide to 9. Then I'm going to pick it again with a pinch harmonic and do a half step bend up. And then bring it back down and put vibrato on it. I'm then going to do a quick hammer on pull off. So I'm going to pick at 9, hammer on to 10, back to 9, and then to 0. So then what I'm going to do is come up to the G string and I'm going to play this phrase. I'll play it slow. So the first thing I'm doing is doing a quick slide from 12 to 13 back to 12 on the G string and I'm um, doing this with my third finger. My first finger is going to travel along so my hand moves at the same time. It makes it quicker when you do it at this speed. So much easier to do. So you can practice that rather than actually trying to slide just your finger over. Move your hand over really is quicker. Now at the back my thumb isn't gripping the neck. If it does then my slide becomes sticky. So I release the pressure so my, my pan, I'll show you the back again, is there. It's actually not even holding the back of the neck when I'm doing the side. I basically put my thumb back down on the neck once I've done the slide. So I'll do the slide. I'll do a quick trill, a 10, 9, um, sorry, 10, 12, 10 on the G. And then I'm going to do this again. Which we did earlier in the song, which is the 12th fret of the G, then half step bend up and bringing it down. Or if I do it with the 12th first, then coming to the 10th fret of the G. Um, the G string. Then I'll do this. So I'm coming up to the 12 and the 10 on the D. Then the 12 on the A string. Then I'm going to slide back with my first finger into the 10 on the A. Go to the 9 on the A. And then I'm going to do this. Same technique we did higher up the fretboard a little earlier. So I'm going to pick at the 10th fret, play the 8, but then I'm going to slide my first finger back to the 10 on the um, E string. So that I can do the horizontal vibrato. So there's that phrase there. Alright, once I did that, I had my um, little phase vibe pedal still on the floor. I uh, purposely did that because I wanted to use it during the solo, just to get that kind of... you know that modulation going and do something with it and the idea I came up with was this uh, I'm going to play without obviously the modulation here but you'll get the idea of what, what was going on so 
So I'm doing a couple of arpeggios first of all. So I'm starting off on the 12th fret of the D string, then going to the 11 and the 14 on the G string. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing one octave up. So this time I'll start on the 15 on the B string and do 14, 17 on the E. Then I'm going to come back to the 14 on the um, E and then go to the 11 on the E. Then I'm going to come back to the 10th fret of the E string, um, pick it and then do a half step bend up and pick again. Um, then I'm going to do what I did earlier in the song and do 13, 12, 9 on the B string. And I use the bar there along with the modulation to get a little bit more modulation. And to finish this part of the phrase, I'll do this. So I'm doing the 12, 10 on the G string, and then the 12 on the D string. And there's slow notes there. Then I'll repeat the uh, arpeggios. So this time what I'm going to do at the end is this. So the first thing I'm doing is a half step bend up on the 17 on the E string. Bring it back to 17. And then I'm going to do 15, 14 on the E string. And I'll do a half step bend up on the 14, bring it back to the 14th fret. And then I'm going to slide with my pinky to the 22nd fret of the uh, yeah, high E string. And now what I'm going to do is start doing half step bends up and then bringing it back down. And I'm grabbing the B string at the same time so I get that double stop thing going on again. <laughs> So I'll do a couple of those and then I'll grab the bar and I'll do lots of vibrato. Now when I'm doing the vibrato, my first finger is laying on top of all the other strings so that I don't get all that extra noise. It quietens everything down. So I'm not pressing down with this finger, I'm basically just laying it on top of the fingers. So again, a couple of George traits there using the flat fifths and the double stops, etc. etc. Alright, from there I'm going to come back to pentatonic position one, and I've switched off the uh, phase vibe pedal at this point as well. And I did a lick which was um, something like this. And I was actually catching both strings when I was doing that um, kind of bend stuff. So like that. So first thing I'm starting off with is this um, kind of uh, hammer and pull off lick, which is just a very very quick lick. And essentially what I'm doing is this: uh, I'm, I'm picking up the 13 on the B string, pulling off to the um, uh, 10 on the B, then coming up to 13 on the G. And then coming back to the 13 on the B again. And it's a little bit of a tricky one because you're bouncing your, your pinky over. Now you can use your third finger as well. You know, whichever works for you. I use my pinky because I'm used to it. So I'll do that first. And slowly again. Essentially I'm doing that. Then I'm going to do this. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, barring off the 10th fret of the, the B string and the G string with my first finger. Now I'm going to pick the um, uh, 10th fret of the, um, the B string and I'm going to actually rake my pick up. So I'm going to do like a mini sweep onto the G string. And on the G string I'm going to be uh, trilling between the 13 and the 10, so it will be like this. Um, 
essentially what I'm doing is I'm just timing it so that um, I'm picking the 10th fret of the B string um, just before I start a revolution of the Now you can actually just pick the B string if you want and then just carry on the trill. I tend to just rake it up and do that. So when I add those to the two together, actually let me show you that slowly. So essentially what I'm doing is this. I'm just playing it really quickly. So when I add those two together, Okay, after that I'm going to come up to the 13th fret of the high E string and do a full step bend up. I hold it initially and then I'm going to bring it that back down to half step. And I'm grabbing the B string at the same time. Now what I started to do was this. So what I'm doing at that point is I'm actually bringing the bend down just under half step. I'm back, bending back up to that half step. And with that double stop, it gives that really, really cool, um, cool sound. Almost kind of, you know, it's a very bluesy kind of sounding thing. Well, to my ears anyways. So right after that, I'm going to do this section, which goes like this. So I'll start off with this. So I'm borrowing off the 10th fret of the B string and the E string, palm muting them slightly. I'm going to do the B string, E string, B string. Then I'll come to the 13 on the E string, pick it and pull off to the 10. Then I'm going to do this. So I'll pick at the 10th fret of the E string, slide up, and then slide back into the 8th fret of the um, E string. And it's all one movement. And I'm not sliding to a particular fret. I'm basically just utilizing the slide to get back to the 8th fret. But I'm going up and then back down. I'm going to pick the 7 on the E string. And then do a half step bend up and down. Then I'm going to come up to the um, B string and then do 10, 8, 7. And when I get to the 7, I'm going to do that half step bend again. After that, I started to do this. So I'm basically just picking the 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 8. Um, and then I followed up with it. So what I'm doing there is I'm barring off the 7th fret of the B string and the G string with my first finger now. Doing a quick trill on the G string between the 9 and the 7. So I'm picking at the 9, then picking at the 7, hammering on to 9, pulling back off to 7. Then I'm doing a pull off on the uh, B string, picking at the 8, pulling off to 7. And then I'm doing one more pull off, which is going to be 9 7 on the uh, G string again. So when I do one revolution, and then they tag together so that they stack on top of each other. Etc. etc. And then to follow that up, I'm going to do this. So that first lick I'm doing uh, goes like this. It's one of my favorite George Lynch licks ever. <laughs> I just love the way that sounds in place. All right, so first thing I'm doing is I'm picking at the eighth fret off the B string, sliding to the 10th fret. Then I'm gonna basically bar off the 10th fret of the uh, E string 
and the B string. I'm going to pick the um, tenth fret of the E, come back to the tenth fret of the B. And I'm just rolling my first finger back and forth to take the pressure off the E string when I need it and I don't need it. Then I'm going to follow that up by picking the 13 on the E string, pulling back off to 10. Then what I did was I picked up the 10th fret of the uh, B string, slid to the 13 on the B. Then I'm going to pick the 15 on the E string, so I'm using my third finger this time. And then I'm going to um, slide to 17. And after that I'm going to do some compound bends, so I'm going to do this. So I'm doing a one and a half step bend up initially, then bringing it down to a whole step, and then back down to 17. Then to the 15. Again with compound bends, check the tones that you need to get. So I'm basically going to the 20, 19, back to 17. So make sure that you get those pitches correct when you're doing the bends. I've done these a number of times so it's quite intuitive for my hands but give your hands time to actually learn how to do it and use your ears as well keep checking with everything your eyes your ears your fingers you know have a look at how far you're bending up to do that one and a half step bend how does that compare to a whole step bend and then do the one and a half step and bring it back down to where the string should be on the whole step etc okay now I'm at, I'm at the 15 I'm going to go to the 14th fret of the E string, I'm going to pick it, then do a half step bend up and down. And put vibrato on it. So when I add that together, then I'm going to do this. So I'm doing a little um, kind of uh, sweet picky thing, uh, arpeggiated. Um, so I'm starting off on the 17 on the E string, no, not 17, the 15 on the E string, pulling off to 14, and then going to the 15 on the B, 14 on the G. And I use a mini sweep for this. I'm then going to use my um, slide thing up and down to get to the uh, 12th fret of the uh, G string with my first finger. Hopefully get to the 12 rather than the 11 and then the 12. <laughs> so when I do that one more time. Then I'm going to come back to uh, the 14 on the G string. Pick it and then do a half step bend up and down then the vibrato. Then I'm going to come back to the 12 and then the 11 on the G string, do a half step bend on the um, 11 on the G. Um, up and down and then vibrato again. And then I'm going to follow up with this leg. So I'm beginning by doing a back slide into the 12th fret of the D. I'm going to do 12, 10, then back to 12. Now I'm going to do that half step bend again that I did on the G string earlier, but on the D string. I'm going to pick it and bring it down. And then come to the 10 on the D. So when I add those phrases together. Then I'm going to come up to the A string, do 12, 10, 9, half step bend, up and down and vibrato. And then um, I'm going to come to the 10th uh, fret of the low E string and do horizontal vibrato. So when I add those phrases together, uh, we get this. In fact, there's one part that I, I forgot to show you. When, when I did this, I'll then follow up with a quick um, trill here. I'll um, pick at 10, hammer on to 12, back to 10. Then the um, 12, 10, 9 on the uh, A string. Up and down, and then 10th fret of the E string. Horizontal vibrato, and we have the end of the solo.
So there you go, guys. There's the solo that I improvised and came up with, and some of the theory behind why I did these things. A lot of these licks are very, very, very intuitive to my fingers. There were, there were a couple which I figured out specifically for this solo, but, you know, most of them I play them every day when I pick up my guitars and stuff and enjoy them and stuff, so they're an integral part of my playing. So I'm not creating anything necessarily brand new, but I am actually piecing together what I already know in order to create the solo that I did. So I hope that helped. Alrighty, I guess you want to see the playthrough again, so here we go with that. Enjoy! And there you go! Improvisation in the style of George Lynch! Yay! <laughs> we love to do that, right? That's why we're here. That's why I do Lynch licks. I want to teach you guys how to do this, you know? So, take away all of those little tips and stuff that I gave during the lesson because that's what helps me to actually create solos in this style. Like I said, because I've been doing this for so, so long, it's very intuitive for me to do. Um, I don't have to think about it too much but initially when I was starting to do this I do remember that I had to think about which licks might work with each other and a really good tool that I used was um, I used to learn a bunch of docking songs and then when I had let's say five six seven docking solos and songs um, under my fingers um, I'd look for the ones that were in the same key and then I'd say to myself all right, if they're in the same key, the solos are in the same key, right? So then I can take the first lick from, let's say, this song and add it to the second lick from this song and then the third lick from this song. Let's see if it works. And then the experimentation starts and you learn how to combine stuff. And essentially magpie from different places. And you can do that with different guitar players as well. And that's when the magic happens and you kind of create your own vibe and your own style you learn what's really, really kind of important to you as a player and what you like to play and what you would like to share with the world. So there you go, some, you know, guitar philosophy <laughs> today on Lynch Licks. Next week I have something really, really, really super special for you starting. Um, so definitely tune in for that because you are gonna wanna see it. In the meantime, have a fabulous week. And any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments box below. Or you can reach me at my website, jpalmer.com or brightonguitarguru.co.uk. And also on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a fantastic week. I am so, so, so excited about next week. And trust me, you guys are gonna go completely nuts over it. So definitely tune in same time next week. Have a great week, guys. See you later.